I feel like I didn't have as big of a reaction to it as some people did. Jim Ryan is leaving Sony as their CEO of the PlayStation brand. Sony Interactive Entertainment, I think. is. I don't know. I forget how they split their things up. But yeah, Jim Ryan announced his departure. He's going to be leaving the company like next year, I think. Uh, but he's announcing it like a, a couple months in advance, like eight months in advance. And which, you know, is enough for them to find a successor and all that. Uh, there, <laughs> Some people were like, yeah, fuck that guy. Good riddance. Uh, I don't hate Jim Ryan. Um, I think a lot of people, the people who dislike Jim Ryan, I think most of them dislike him for the fact that he de-emphasized the Japanese development side of PlayStation and really leaned into the Western market, which is like, you know, the thing with Jim Ryan is that He's a, he was a very, he seemed like a very safe CEO and not a very adventurous leader. He made very safe, sensible business decisions. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, honestly, he kind of, I, I totally forgot. I didn't realize he only became the CEO in 2019. I could have sworn it was longer. But no, he was actually, he was the president of the European branch of the company. And then in 2019, he ascended to CEO over the PlayStation stuff, the PlayStation dynasty. And to be, to be honest, he kind of inherited a, a company in the lead. Uh, very, I get kind of a sense of like resting on, on his laurels, kind of a feeling out of post Jim Ryan PlayStation and pre Jim Ryan PlayStation, honestly. I mean, let's, let's be real. Uh, all the PS4 had to do was not piss people the fuck off and they would have won the eighth, uh, console generation by a landslide anyway. Dude, hey, if anyone's in a business class, let me know. Do they, are they teaching about Don Matrick yet? Are there lesson plans using him as a cautionary tale? It is insane to me. I like to think about this sometimes. It is crazy to me how, you know, at the by the end of the seventh gen, the PlayStation and the Xbox brands were pretty neck and neck. It was kind of exciting. Because there was this whole storyline. Oh, the PS3 started out really weak. All these problems. The X, the 360 was in the lead the whole time. But by the end, the PS3 really came back. Had a strong library. Made a lot of good decisions. Releasing new, cheaper models and all that. And, and, and all these great exclusive games. And it was like, oh man, what's the, what's the next generation going to be? And then in the span of literally a week, Don Matrick... Fucked Xbox for like a decade. That was like 2013 or 2014. It's been almost 10 years since he said, yeah, we have a device. We have an offline device. It's called Xbox 360. Could you imagine? I, I love how Jeff Keighley is the one asking him that question. It's like, it's like, what is this? Like a fucking TV show with like a, the same cast of characters? <laughs> What about Jeff Keighley's just randomly places? Remember when he was on Fox News to defend the Mass, Mass Effect 3 that it wasn't like a fucking porn simulator for, for babies, for marketed to babies? That was funny. I was like, holy shit, that was him. I, I looked that video up for the, uh, the um, games hearing video, the Senate games hearing video. There isn't a snappy title to that. Uh, yeah, all that Sony had to do was just be relatively sensible and not the greediest scum f pieces of shit, smug assholes in the world. And they would have, they had so much public favor just by not being Microsoft in that moment. And they rode that shit all the way to the bank. 
And to be fair, you know, they put out some really big titles. They they did they they put in some work to build the PlayStation brand up. And like PlayStation is the home for the mainstream casual more casualish gamer, right? You know? Um but it's not a very brave company, you know what I mean? I look at something like The Last of Us. I've never played The Last of Us. I haven't played Spider-Man. I just snapped all my magnets to my hitbox, which is like a metal box. And I didn't realize how loud it would be. Let's hear that again. Um, what the fuck are they talking about? Right. I haven't played like Spider-Man, Piz 4, or God of War, you know, Gow or Gower. Um... I haven't played any of those games, so I can't make a judgment on the quality or anything like that. I'm not gonna, so this is not a critique of that, but I will say they're not very brave games to make. They aren't like, yeah, they aren't brave games. Uh, what's a brave game to make? I totally had an example in my head of something that was like, yeah. This is like taking a ch Doom 2016. That was a brave game to make. I think it's really easy to forget what the state of the like first person shooter genre was in like 2015, 2016 when it came out. <laughs> but cuz now it ch it changed it changed the landscape so much. That now you kind of forget, you got to have a little perspective, use your your past, your history goggles, and think, man, yeah, there really wasn't anything like this out at this time that was of this quality. Um, it was only that, and in the years following, that stuff was, that, that smaller developers were like, oh shit, people like games like this. I want to make a game like that. Yeah, there's a market. Hang on, there's a market. Like, that's a very... You know, I look at like a uh, there's you know, the 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 mild uh, the resurgence of horror games that happened uh, in the last couple years, and I think like yeah, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's is not a particularly brave game to make because it was just like I don't think Scott Cawthon imagined that he was it's just a little game he was making to put something like Doom 2016 out actually took like some courage. And to market it and to, like, actually put some weight behind it. And to put that budget behind the game. That, to me, is, like, a, a brave decision to make creatively and uh, commercially. Uh, something like The Last of Us or God of War is not. Not to say that they're bad games. It's just that, like... There is no world where someone looks like an executive looks at the pitch for The Last of Us and says, mm, I don't know. Like, no, like, let's be real. Obviously, it's a like a very cinematic blockbuster type triple A game with serious performances and a serious story. And it's got zombies, which are popular right now. And it's got this it's it's it has so many elements that are like all of those things all of those things can be great in their own way i haven't played it they might very well be fantastic in their own way but like it's it's not it's like a you know it's like a marvel movie marvel put up fucking ant-man and the wasp they put out ant-man and the wasp and people went to see it i'm pretty sure that movie made its money back that's like I don't want to compare The Last of Us to that, you know? <laughs> Should I compare Spider-Man because it's another Marvel thing? Um, that's what I mean. Those are the kinds of decisions that Sony makes, under at least under Jim Ryan. We're going to make games that have mass appeal. That have, what, um, oh. God damn it, who's the guy from Action Button? I always hear his name and then I forget his name. Uh, I always, no, I don't want... <laughs> I don't want the... What is this iPhone thing? Um, oh my god. Tell, what is the guy's name? He has like a really normal name and it's always escapes... Grrr, I'm so mad. 
It's the, dude, I can see his face. Tim Rogers, there his fucking name is. Journalist guy. Now he's, uh, makes the YouTube, I add action button. He made like a three hour Doom retrospective. That was pretty interesting. I thought it, he makes weird videos. Highly pretentious, but strangely likable. That's how I would describe him. And I haven't watched his video on The Last of Us, but I saw someone quote it one time, and I'm like, damn, that was that's so true. Um, which was, The Last of Us was always going to be a great game because it has all the things that gamers say make great games. It has a serious story and great performances and cinema and all this stuff, right? I think that's very true. Uh, also, partially, probably why I'm just not that interested in it. That's why I like playing weirder... I like playing weirder shit. <laughs> I like playing weirder stuff. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm making a video right now on some weird shit that did not do well. <laughs> but it was interesting. I feel like that, that's like half my channel. Is weird shit that didn't perform well, but it's interesting. And it's not always good. It's usually pretty bad. Like, I make a lot of videos on weird games, and I'm usually pretty critical, and I don't want to be. It's just how I feel about the thing. That's just how I'm genuinely feeling. I go into a lot of things actually wanting and expecting to like them, and then I end up not liking them, because I either, oh, actually, I don't think it's very good. I actually have a lot of problems with it. Um, all of the distaste and the, the, all the, 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 whenever I'm critical on my channel, that's like that's just how I really feel. That that's, just, that's how I really. Feel. I try to give games like props and kudos where I can, because if I because I genuinely feel that way.